hi guys how y'all doing today welcome to another video so guys today's video we're going to be talking about what you need to start off a photography studio i know we talked about starting a business but we're talking about starting off a studio let's say you want to have like an, a studio in your house or you have a space you want to set up so i'm going to be talking about the basic things you need to start off a studio so if you want to know my thoughts on this keep watching <music> I'm just going to be talking about the basic things you need to start up a photography studio. There's, there are probably more things that in the future you will want to get, but I'm just focusing on the very basic things you need. So first things first, you need a camera, a DSLR, and um, if you get a camera, automatically you need to have a memory card, batteries, like a normal, that whole complete set, you should have that. And then I would recommend a 50mm lens if you're just getting one lens. If you can afford just that one lens, the lens that I would advise you to get will be like the 50mm 1.8. It's a very affordable lens. And it's, it's a lot better than you can open up your aperture to 1.8. But with the camera, the, the lenses that come with most of those DSLRs, they are, the aperture, the maximum is like 3.5, 4.5. So they'll have limits. You cannot shoot in low light and all. So yeah, I recommend a 50mm 1.8, a good camera. I would, I don't want to mention a particular brand, so but just a very good DSLR, Nikon, Canon, Sony, whatever your preference is, it's up to you. Depends on your pocket, it's still up to you. I think I when I started my studio, my first studio, my first first camera was a D90, not even a D90, one other one I can't remember the name. But my first, when I started the business, it was D90, then I started getting better. Yeah, so, um, that being said, so a good DSLR, a lens, a proper, maybe 50mm lens. If you have money to buy more lenses, by all means, get an 85, a 35, those three lenses are awesome. Or a, a maybe 20, 70, 7200. But I'm not talking about basics for the sake of this video. Now, after that, you would also need um, backdrops. You need um, either paper backdrops or canvas. Or there's something I do, I provide with, because I tend to get bored with the same type of backdrops. So sometimes I just get fabrics and I shoot with fabrics. So you can get a fab, like a brown leather, not leather look, like a matte feel. Some fabrics that are used for chairs, you can buy those kind of fabrics and those fabrics will serve as um, backdrops for your shoes. And it will still give you the whole canvas-like vibe, if you, especially if you shoot it without the light hitting it. So it, you, you love the result, you can try that. So if you can't afford to buy the canvas yet, you can buy um, the fabric, maybe like the ones that are a bit wide, so you position your subject in the middle and that will save you the money for getting a proper canvas. But with time, for... for for your brand and all, you should get good canvas, paper, etc. But I'm talking about basics now. So if you don't really have the money, a piece of fabric that is dull faced can serve as a backdrop. Now, if you want to hang your backdrop, you probably need a backdrop stand, or you just need to tape it to the wall if you have a proper wall. So you can tape your backdrops to the wall. But for paper backdrops, I doubt if you can tape. Okay, you can still tape paper backdrops. You can roll it down and tape it from. So yeah, if you can't afford to get a stand. That you're starting out now, so maybe no stand where you can take it to the wall, but you have to have a wall where you can take it to. Yeah, so backdrop, backdrop stand, or a tape. Then you also need a stool where your subject can sit on, and yeah, you need a stool. There are some rectangular boxes you can make, you can make two, three of those, and they will serve you very well. They don't look, they are not so in your face, so even if you use it for 10 clients, nobody really notices the stools. But if you make a very um, elaborate kind of stool or chair, people will notice that by the time you shot three, four persons with it, your work just looks the same. So, but if you have a, those simple stools, they, are, they just get lost in you. Nobody really notices those type of simple stools. So, and they are very important. You might want to photograph a couple, one person is sitting, one person is standing, both of them are standing. It all depends on you. So, yeah, just get a stool. And then you need a system, a computer, a laptop, a desktop, whatever you can have and you need the software to edit your pictures with you need photoshop lightroom um, capture one it depends on you i don't use i don't even know how to use capture one anyways so but it depends on you 
the softwares that you you've learnt with what you want to use to edit, you need to install it to your computer. So when you photograph, you edit with your system, email to your clients. So you need that you need an, an internet source, you need a small music box, maybe it's just something, a little speaker or something. So when you're photographing your clients, they are, they, the sound is just making them feel more comfortable. Yeah, and then um, for your camera, you need a trigger because if you're using um, an external light source, you need a trigger to trigger the light source. Yeah, so finally, lighting is very important. That's like the most important thing for studio photography. If you have, if you want to do natural light, you can totally do that if you have a big window source. I've seen amazing studio photographers that take awesome portraits with just natural light. So if you have a large window source, you can totally do that. And even if you don't have a window source, you can get a strobe light and get a large um, umbrella to diffuse the strobe light. So if you have a large umbrella, it tends to soften the light and, and the light spreads more. And then you love, your pictures will be more flattering. So yeah. I get the large light source. Just maybe one good light. It's okay to start with. For the longest, I shot with one light source when I was in my when I started my portrait. It's now that I experiment with two, three light sources. But of course, you can do We're talking about basics here, so yeah, one light source is fine. But you need reflectors, and if you can't afford to get a reflector, you can make do with um, the DIY versions. You can use um, there's this foam core. I think they call it um. What did you say? To them? What? Floater. When you buy like furniture, they normally have it inside the carton. It's just white. And if you buy like a very big TV screen or a refrigerator, I don't know about refrigerator, but I know when I bought, bought the TV, it was there. So yeah, you can just use that as a reflector on that, the client's chin. Or you can use a piece of fabric as a reflector. You can just always improvise if you don't have um, a proper reflector. But if you are doing it as a business, you can try to invest in a reflector. But well, all the things I'm saying are just basic things. Let's say you are traveling to one city now and you want to do portraits for the clients and you cannot carry your entire studio. These are the little things that you, you can go with. Or you are just starting out a, a business and you just have very little money. This is what this video is for. I hope that makes sense. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching my video. Please subscribe to my channel. Click the like button, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day guys.